Hi, everybody. Um, what I want to talk about today is we've been working with uh, here at AWR and Microwave Office. We've been working with one of our uh, uh, closely uh, partnered companies, ANSYS, with their tool HFSS. Many of you know that we have a link into the HFSS software. What I'd like to show you today uh, is some work in progress uh, for the new thermal link that we're working on and some preliminary uh, simulations for that and uh, some of the design flow. What, what I've got right here is a simple amplifier. Uh, we're at a high level. You, would, you could probe down into the schematics. If we go ahead and look at the layout for this, it looks like this, and a 3D view looks like this. Of course, the customer would uh, normally go ahead and simulate this in the cir our circuit simulator, get an answer. Uh, they might go ahead and EM uh, the uh, non-devices, the, the layout and all the metal vias, etc., in uh, either one of our simulators, or they could ship this out to HFSS if they so wished. What I want to show you today is how we are working on extending that flow uh, to thermal capabilities. Uh, in particular, ANSYS has a product called IcePack, which is a popular thermal solver. Our customers, uh, particularly power amplifier customers, are often interested in this type of circuit where, for example, here where my cursor is, this FET package is radiating heat. And that heat has to go somewhere. So the first issue is where does it go and how much does it heat things up and do we have a problem? Uh, typically, it would be going down, uh, if we zoom in, it would be going down these vias attached to the FET package it'll be going out on the lines. Do we have a problem? Another little bit more sophisticated problem that our designers typically worry about is this uh, FET, and maybe it's neighboring FETs, heat up. And as they heat up, the model changes, the device characteristics change, and the performance of the amplifier changes. So we need to know the temperature at the FET, and then we can put that back into the models in Microwave Office and go ahead and uh, finish our simulation with thermal effects. The way the flow is uh, roughly going to work, at least conceptually, is you have this layout here. In this particular design, if we go ahead here and you will see this extract block, if I click on it in, in the schematic, it turns red. And everything that is red in the layout will go out to HFSS. Notice that the devices themselves, or packages, are green. They are not red. At this point, they're not going out. Eventually, then, what will happen is when we look at the finished 3D layout in our software, uh, which would now look like this, the devices and their layouts have been added in. All of this will go out to HFSS. Once we get into HFSS, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and switch to uh, slides here to show you this. And once we get into HFSS, the entire design will come into the HFSS um, environment. Uh, in particular for thermal, we want it going into the uh, classic HFSS interface, which is supported. and as we cruise through these slides, you see uh, there is our layout in Microwave Office. And eventually, we go ahead and get this project uh, into IcePack. And what you're seeing here is the thermal solver. You have to add thermal uh, properties to the materials, heat conductivity, etc. Uh, in, and eventually, those uh, material properties will be synced up with Microwave Office, work in progress. And we can simulate our LNA. And what you're seeing right here in this slide is the amplifier that we had brought in for Microwave Office. You see that package, that octagonal package. You're seeing down here on the left the meshing. This is for thermal now. And we're going ahead and meshing up all those vias, the uh, various uh, boards, packages, etc. We're actually putting uh, power into the FET. It's dissipating out of the FET. And then we, for example, can get a temperature map, which you see here on the left, or the temperature at various points on the circuit. 
On the right, they actually have this in a box and they're doing uh, convective cooling. So they would have a fan on one side of the box and it would be blowing co cooler air uh, over the board. And that's it, folks. Uh, so stay tuned. Just wanted to notify you there's some uh, exciting new developments we're working on with ANSYS, uh, in particular with the thermal link. Thank you very much. Have a great day.